Hi folks, the video you're about to see um, was um, intended as a three part series, this is part two of that series and what it was, was as you can see from the description, it's, it's rebuilding a set of carbs but I, I had actually initially planned to do it as uh, part one was, well I did do it, uh, remove the carbs, little joy of the car part two, th this one was rebuilding the carbs and then part three was, um, I, I, I I wasn't going to show fitting the carbs, but it was going to be sort of how to tune them up and get them balanced and stuff like that. Um, the problem I had, it, well, and it, initially that the chap called me about a year ago now, um, and, and his car was smoking quite bad. I'd initially diagnosed it as like an oil seal, maybe, maybe a piston ring or valve stem oil seal. Um, and he, he, he went to a couple of other different places and you know they, they gave him similar advice, but a couple of people said the carbs. Uh, the chap come back to me and and said that he wants the carbs rebuilt because it works out the cheapest option and you know it, it wouldn't have had to do it anyway unfortunately we rebuilt the carbs and it was still smoking afterwards even now I tried to sort of uh, wind the fuel in all the way in but it was just still smoking like really really bad so unfortunately three part series is not going to be it um, I thought about trying to edit this video to sort of make it work as, it, as its own entity but I just decided it's going to be a lot easier to just explain it to you like this uh, and then just leave the video as intended. Um, I will put part one up but I'll leave it unlisted and you can watch it click on this link here or wherever it is up the top here and um, yeah I hope you enjoy the video. Hi folks, welcome to part two on the uh, SD1 carbs. Um, before we get into the video, um, please uh, like and uh, subscribe to the channel. When you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the little notification bell so you're informed of all the videos as and when I do them. Uh, please share on social media so we can get some more subscribers and more people interested in the channel. Um, also, if you have a look in the description box below, uh, check out my friend's channel, show them some love and support. If you want to support me a little bit more, you can do so through uh, Patreon, which is a dollar a month or um, I have a merchandise store which is Teespring. Um, we have all sorts of products in there, t-shirts, uh, bags, hoodies, I say all sorts of products in all sorts of colours, so go check that out. So, it's actually been about six months uh, since I took these off. Um, but we, we tracked down that they are actually the right ones and the correct ones for the vehicle. Um, but then we sort of like trying to, we struggled um, getting the, the correct parts. They sent us at some parts, but then we found out that these had been modified sort of during the late 70s. We had to track down the other parts, and then I've been busy as well. So, like I said, it's been about six months since I've removed them, and we're now finally getting around to uh, rebuilding them. So, um, as I said, I've got everything all set up, I've got some tools out. I'll probably end up needing a bit more when I've got a little pot on that. But I'm going to get the GoPro set up so we've got a nice uh, overview of the bench, and we'll get these rebuilt. Right, so as you can see, I've got the bench clean, I've put some paper down on, on the bench so I know everything's clean and also if um, I need to write something down, because um, I've never actually rebuilt this type of car before, I've rebuilt cars before but neither actually this specific one. So if there's something that needs to be noted, I can just jot it down, like that's that screw, that's that screw, it's not a problem at all. I've got a little pot here because both of these dash pots have oil in them uh, and then I'll just use the lid to put screws and stuff on in a way as well. Now, the carbs themselves are actually very, very basic bits of kit. You've got uh, your float bowls here, you've got uh, two tubes in here, and then these are the main jets. So this lever here is the uh, choke. As you can see, when you put the choke up, it just allows more, more fuel in. Um, and then there's your throttle. The throttle there, which is over the butt fly. And you've also got uh, your plunger there. And like I say, there's oil in there that stops it sort of going up too too quickly and, and dropping down too quickly and it just maintains the revs. So I'm going to start with this one. Um, so I have actually already taken this one apart. Uh, like I said we, we struggled to get the right parts and I'd started rebuilding this and I'd actually recorded some segments. Uh, then I discovered that the, the parts are all wrong. So I will start with that one because I know there's no oil in it. Um, but it is a selection of parts. You've got uh, your floats here with uh, your little ball valves series of gaskets, uh, there's the uh, new uh, jets, uh, there's some springs in there for the plungers, let me show you, yeah, just, just new springs for the plungers and uh, yeah so as I say these are very very basic bits of kit um, but it's just a matter of going through it methodically and do, doing one at a time and then just replacing all the bits as we go. 
So I'm going to put that over there for now, so that's out of the way, and I've got myself a little bit more room. Um, you should be able to, yeah, you can see clearly. Uh, so I'm just going to mop up all the shit as I go. So, although I have had this apart and I know there's no oil in it, I'm just going to double check it. Yeah, there's no oil in there. I'm going to stick that over to the back. Yeah, it's just a matter of throwing your tools on the floor, because you don't need it, obviously. Just start taking things apart. And so I'm keeping all of these screws together. Now I'm, I'm pretty good and I'm, I'm going to know what which way is going but this is the joy of having the paper down. So if you've got your bench and you don't know where they go, you can put them there, put a circle around it and then write that's for your dash pot so you know that that bit's for that. There you go, just a little dash pot there. There's the spring like I said. And then there is your actual needle and then your plunger. So now we can take the uh, float bubbles off. And there you go, there's your, uh, there's your float. So the way the float works is, I don't know whether that's going to pick up on camera. Might get me your phone out. Yeah, let me get your phone. So there you go, that's the actual float, um, well, the, the float itself. And there's your float box. So fuel will come in here and then fill that up. And then when it reaches a certain level, there's a tiny little ball valve there you can just see. And then that will push up and then close, close the fuel up. So the fuel comes in there through that pipe and then that will just close it off and then stop the fuel coming in and stop it uh, overflowing. Quite a simple design and that's pretty much the same on any sort of carburetor. Um, this one obviously the flow bars on the side, some of them are in incorporated into it but they're all generally around the same sort of thing. Jet off. I'm sure I'll adjust with that.
Yeah. Now, so I'll grab some uh, blue roll and, uh, and I'm clean everything up as I go. Now I've got it mostly stripped down. I'm just going to use some standard brake cleaner. Um, I'm not going to do it over the bench, I'm going to do it sort of over here. But yeah, just give it a clean, give it a wipe down, and uh, yeah, just make sure everything's sort of clean. If you're using blue rod, you want to make sure that you don't leave any of the, uh, the fibres in any of the sort of little galleys or, or anything like that because it will block it and potentially sort of just ruin your day. You know, you'll rebuild the carbon, but oh, why ain't it working? It's because you fucked up. That there is your uh, mixture adjustment, so I'm winding that or wind it back in to, to let more fuel in and out. And it has a spring there to stop it um, self adjusting. It will do eventually with the vibrations, but the idea is that stops it self adjusting. So that sleeves back in there. I'm pretty certain that should have an over but I don't think it does. That's got a little idea on it. is not an easy job. It's fiddly and annoying. Come on. Be nice. There you go. A little bit of a wheel. That's what I needed. And now I'm gonna get that all up. I'm trying not to get me out of my way. I'm bloody noggin. But I also need to see what I'm doing. Come on. Mm. to make sure that you don't cross thread anything because obviously it's alley and grass and very delicate stuff so it goes in put that back in Still gotta be careful and make sure that you don't don't cross through anything. I'm using an adjustable on this because I haven't actually got a spanner that fits that. It's a really weird size, I don't know what it is. It's not um, a 7 16 it's not an 11 mil and then a 12 is way too big. So I have no idea what sort of these. That's nipped up. That's nipped up. 
and there we go. That bit's done. So now let's move on to the actual float. So let's put that there. Right, the, uh, the GoPro keeps fucking up for some reason, so I'm not sure where I was, but basically, um, that, that's your actual float that pushes up, as I said earlier. Um, here's the new one, a slightly different design, it's going to need adjusting, got the adjustment sort of specs there, and then there's the new uh, ball valve. So, without throwing it all over the floor, let's get it out. So, yeah, it's basically just uh, just find a little needle, I don't know whether that will come up. Let me get my phone again. So yeah, you can see how tiny it is. It's just a tiny little cone that sits in this brass fitting and then pushes against the bottom here because we've got taper. And then the fuel uh, comes in there and it just stops, basically. So yeah, that sits in there. This, this is why it's got the fins. So it just allows fuel down the sides when that the plunge is open and then down there. you can see you can't actually see where it sort of blocks off yeah it just moves up and down and then it just shows up simple as that so we need to actually take this little pin there you can see where it's been done before it's been marred up just using the wire grips we'll take that off take the actual valve out then what I'll do is I'll take the gasket off, clean it all up, make sure that face is nice and clean, and then put it all back together. Right, so I'm just going to use parallel grips to clean that up. So shit everywhere. see why we need to clean it up. It's a little bit of uh, shit around, I don't know whether that's going to come off, hopefully it does. Can't wait to get my phone again, just trust me. It's a little bit of shit around it, so I'm just going to run a little bit of emery paper around it. Um, if I had um, like a brass wire brush and get some really, really thin ones, I'd probably run around that with a bit of wire brush rather than, rather than that. But, you know, a little bit of sandpaper or emery cloth, just run around there. So then when we put the new gasket on, it's a nice clean seal. And then I'll do the same on, on, on this face here. Although that looks, looks pretty good to be fair. I've got a Dremel kit, I might have a look so if I've got a uh, wire brush thing in that. Can't get to run the compressor up. So I'm going to get a socket for this. Open it the same. Like that. So hopefully this will just undo nicely. There we go. Okay. 
That is fucking awesome. Going through telling you how to sort of do things properly and methodically and I've fucking gone and lost the thing. Clever. So just gonna use a bit of uh, 800, you don't want anything too heavy. And we'll just go around cleaning that up. Make sure you've got a nice clean surface. Little gaps. Just want to get some of the shit off first. Sorry, I'm just going to see what I'm doing. Really, not very good, I just go for it. So I'm keeping the angle of the blade sort of relatively shallow so I'm not digging into the aluminium. It's probably not even proper aluminium, this is probably some fucked up zinc shit. You know, in the 70s everything was fucking cheap as chips, wasn't it? Yeah, just get all of that old gasket off. I'm doing this bit now. So then that way I can sort of blow everything out and flush it all out with some brake cleaner before put the new valves off it. If you do this afterwards, there's a chance you're going to get some shit and crap in it. And again, you know, like I said with the uh, blue roll, you can end up sort of fucking up all your hard work, which is what you don't want to do. Yep, so now go through it. Some Same as before, just clean it all up with the uh, blue roll or cloth, whatever you've got. Yeah. Now it's just a matter of uh, reinstalling everything. So
Now, Wisdom would sort of say you want to clean the pit up, but please don't. These are a set size so that just fits in there nicely without falling out. So I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. You start running uh, sandpaper down that. Although you're only taking minute amount of material off, you are taking material off and you could end up with potentially with a sloppy fit. And nobody wants a sloppy fit. Exactly the same with yeah. and push it in, and that's fine. It's got this nice little spring in there. Didn't have that spring before, so there's obviously something wrong with this this plunger. Something like that. Whichever, it's all old, it's all done. So I need to measure that and make sure that's right. But I need to learn how to use fractions per an inch. So I'll measure that and adjust all this. Um, I don't think it's going to need much adjusting, but I'll double check it anyway. And I'll, uh, I'll be back. Well, that was a bit of a pain in the ass. My uh, ruler here. As you can see, it's worn out, so getting the fractions was a pain in the ass. It was uh, uh, one eighth of an inch. So, I worked it out, it's um, just over three mil. And like I said, that's pretty much bang on, so it's just a matter of uh, screwing it back in now. So, we get the gasket back on. As with any gasket you want to make sure you tighten them up evenly so all I'm doing is nipping it out to start with and then just keep going around slowly to nip it tight. You don't need to do it too tight but you want it tight enough that it's obviously not going to leak. And if it does leak you can always just nip it up a little bit more, it's a brand new gasket but you don't want to destroy the gasket to start with. So I'm put a lot of pressure on that as you see, just a quick nip. So now it's a matter of just gonna clean that up, still a little bit of oil on that. Again. Double check there's nothing I missed. So the gaskets will get replaced there in that kit, but this has also got cut of O rings. You've got to be careful sometimes with these these sort of kits, they're a generic sort of thing. So like that one kit will do 
say three or four different cards. So I'm pretty certain I'm pretty good. And this is just the, the rebuild for the natural needles, the needles of jets, so which we've got new jets so we don't need that until we refit it. So I haven't got any needles, just got the uh, the new actual jet so you can be careful to line that up in there and then it's got an orientation it's got a little slot down there you see and this little tang here that can't be removed like that and new spring so these are yellow ones so have a look for any markings on here I'm pretty certain they are right, the, the company that we used were really, really good and helpful. Obviously be careful with it, but that goes in there, Oops. let's clean this up. Be careful not to drop the thing. So, <coughs> yeah, that's all cleaned up. That goes on there. Right. Go on there. There's no gasket on these. Just got to line it all up where it was before. And then screw it out. Again, being careful not to cross thread anything. That is not in the right place. So let's spin it around. That's a bit I'm going to clean this up, I'm not going to touch any of that, I'm just going to clean up around here because I'm not going to put any oil in this until I uh, put it back on the car, same as spilling out. So I don't want to put that in dry and score it. That's it. 
make sure that works. PF. And that's one cover I rebuilt. So I'll uh, I'll do the flanges right before I put it on. This uh, that's the air filter side. That's obviously where it goes onto the manifold. I'll uh, I'll clean that up, and then I'll uh, give it another spray with brake cleaner and stuff right before I fit it. So you know it's it's going to be transported to the customer's house, not on here. So I'm going to leave that there for now. You know, so when I put it in the box, you know, I don't end up with dinks. I'll, I'll do that last minute. And I'll, uh, I'll show you in the next video when, when we come to refitting it and then uh, tuning it. Uh, I'm not going to make you watch me rebuild the other one, so I'm going to get that rebuilt and I'll be back in a second. Well, there you go, they're both done. Um, when I went through the box, obviously there was like loads of little packets in there. I did actually find uh, some new needles, so I swapped them out. Um, I didn't show you how to do it because um, it's actually just held in with a little grub screw. Let me show you quick. Yeah, so in the end of the float, you can see the needle, and just on the side, there's a tiny little grub screw that holds uh, a little uh, cupping. Oh, just about sit out there, I don't think you can. Um, yeah, so yeah, I didn't bother showing that. It's literally just a flat screw, and then the actual needle itself. Come focus. Yeah, the needle itself just pops out the bottom. There's a little screw that sits on the top, and then the grub screw just holds it in there. So yeah. Um, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I will be doing a part three uh, while refitting to the car. I probably won't show you too much of refitting them because there was a part one of taking them apart. Um, but I will do uh, the, the part three of like once they're fitted, sort of setting them up, making sure they're balanced, uh, and then going through uh, adjusting them so that the CO is right and then it, the, the car runs properly. Um, so yeah, like I said at the top of the video, please like, share, subscribe. Um, please check out my friends in the description box. Please check out my Teespring. And I'll, uh, I'll see you for the next one. Bye.